Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, we're here to talk about your two new Christmas songs you just dropped, you know, which cool. features one with your son, River, you know. Yeah. <laughs> when did you uh, guys record this? Because I, I always, it's fun talking to musicians about their Christmas stuff. A lot of them, they're like, oh, I recorded this in the summer and it was kind of weird, you know. <laughs> like doing yeah, that's, uh, cool. that's the smart thing to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what we, like, every time we get to, like, this point, we're like, all right. Next time, next for next Christmas, we're going to record it in the summer or the spring or whenever we're doing the next record. Mm-hmm. And what ends up happening is, man, it's just kind of a buzzkill to get into the, like, if we're recording an album, you just want to be happy about that vision. Yeah. I mean, the life, like, the last thing you want to do is be like, oh, let's do a Christmas song, <laughs> you know? And then plus, like you're saying, it's just it's just kind of weird to not to do something Christmassy during like, I don't know, NBA season. Or, I, don't know, I mean, baseball season or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so so, yeah, we kind of wait till the last minute <laughs> every year. We get to a point where it's like, oh, my God, it's like the week before Thanksgiving. We should probably record a Christmas song. Oh, and that's cool. it, we bust it out in like a day. And it's always kind of rough and like, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, Christmas baby, please come home. That was a cool choice. I mean, the other one I feel like was just natural. Like your, your son had <laughs> lost his two front teeth, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, the, the baby, please come home one. That's one we've been wanting to do for a while. Uh-huh. But that vocal is just like a really challenging vocal. Yeah. Just way up there and like... Kelly, I mean, we, but Kelly especially has so much respect for Darlene Love. And we've been working with um, Wicked Cool, which is little Steven's label. And he loves Darlene Love. <laughs> but the last thing we wanted to do was like, try to record that song and do it badly. <laughs> yeah. um, but this year we were just like, you know what? Screw it, let's do it. Like we, we have to do this song. So we just recorded it at home. And then I sent it to our, our producer, John Fields. I just beamed it to him in Minneapolis and he mixed it. And um, yeah, it just happened over the internet. Like it has yeah. to happen. Thank God for our technology during this whole pandemic. I mean, at least musicians are living collaborating over the internet and at least we yeah. have new music and art to brighten our lives or a lot of us are on lockdown, you know? I know, I mean, it's been between like at the beginning of lockdown, we were doing a lot of stage it shows, you know? So these like online, live shows and we did them for 10 weeks in a row one per week right and by the end we were like exhausted because like (laughs) the kids are here we don't have like they're just in the camera with us while we're playing but I think a lot of people like really counted on it you know like the fact that we're able to like put music out there and kind of like provide a escape Mm -hmm. for people like we get that and like we're like that's that's why we're here so we're like all right let's get to work you know <laughs> yeah. well what are your stages you did a whole nirvana cover set that was great you know oh yeah yeah we well we don't want to it's kind of like we don't want to keep playing our own songs <laughs> yeah not and, a huge nirvana fan so i thought that was cool you know oh yeah it's the greatest band ever in the history of the yeah. world <laughs> um yeah man they like it, we'll we'll take like a band and then we'll just like do their songs for an hour Mm-hmm. and man you learn so much by learning other people's songs I, I knew every Nirvana, i know every nirvana song ever recorded even the b-sides on guitar like i just know oh, nice <laughs> but you what, know what are like, some of your favorite like deep tracks you know because i i used to spend all my money as a teenager buying bootlegs you know of like any nirvana concert or outsesticide which was <laughs> oh yeah outsesticide was like one of those like or <laughs> hormoning <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i liked um Oh, you know that like really like rough demo. I think it's on the box set called Do Re Mi. Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. You know, I love that song, man. And like, um, it's funny because all the stuff I spent millions of, or hundreds of dollars on bootlegs all ended up on that box set. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that that was crazy. Like, and now like you can find it all online. Yeah. Like there's like a Nirvana subreddit where they constantly post these things and stuff. And I'm like, man, I paid for like a Russian import. Back yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I like Here She Comes Now. Yeah. Like, you know, like just all those like really like rough Clean up stuff. before she comes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, even as youth was always one of my favorites. I, I always wanted to ask why that never made it on the, uh, Nevermind, you know, because that was the B side for Smells Like Teen Spirit. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think they put it on, was it, 
what did they put on the um uh that geffen compilation oh it was uh instead of stay uh stay away it was pay to play yeah okay that's the lyrics that for that one yeah. yeah 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 like those b-sides are cool like moist yeah. vagina and like, <laughs> yeah know. yeah millions like, of gallons of rubbing yeah. alcohol <laughs> basically everything that band ever recorded. exactly that's my one pet peeve when i like people interviewed dave Grohl, and they were like well why didn't you write songs for nirvana i'm like well what song would you take away i mean you know it's yeah. like you know. yeah yeah there i mean marigold was great you know that b-side dave wrote you know <laughs> yeah which like it sounds yeah. like a Foo fighter song <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's, but yeah nirvana's huge influence you know like it's just the band that it's just mm -hmm. that's why I, I picked up the guitar you know like mm -hmm. it's just you know and I, I think a lot of people can say that because the songs are simple and but they're interesting and they've got these counterpoint melodies yeah and you don't have to be a virtuoso guitarist to play them so i think that's why that band just really like is so influential because so many people learned how to play by playing along to their simple song yeah I, I used to play drums but the only things i could play on guitar was like the come as you are rift and uh, about the girl <laughs> which by the way it was a rip off two chords. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh that's easy <laughs> that's funny yeah no i mean huge influence obviously but but yeah, yeah man like uh we just we, we just like wanted to put something out there that made people feel good. And, um, well, it's great. Yeah. Cause my daughter, she's her one front tooth. She already lost the other ones wiggly. So I actually played her the, all I want for Christmas with your son. I'm like, look, it's fun when you get your teeth out, you get to sing like this. You know? Yeah. Like <laughs> river. I don't know. He was all skeptical. And then after we recorded it, I was like, dude, I promise you it's great. I will not put it out there. Like I, I refuse to embarrass you. Mm -hmm. Right. But like he doesn't believe me because I'm his dad. <laughs> yeah. Was it easy for him to like to sing in the mic because he just watches his parents play music all the time, you know? Yeah, you know, it's different um live and then recording wise, it's different because like when when I'm recording Kelly or me, we'll yeah. do like you, you know, you try to get the whole thing in one take, but then you have to go and punch stuff. So it's like, all right, do this one line again and I'm just gonna punch you. I'm gonna give you a little pre roll. So you get like five seconds beforehand and then go. And so that's one thing that River got. Cause I was like, dude, just redo that verse line. And so I just run it for him and he'd punch it right in and he'd be like on point. So, yeah. So we're going to do some more stuff with him. He wants oh, to do cool. the bird song, like surfing bird. <laughs> oh, let me tell you about it. Yeah. Silver chair did a really cool, like punk cover of that. One of their, oh, I should check it out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, man, I, I just want him to feel comfortable with it all because eventually, awesome. you know, I'll just have him replace. Well, me. I mean, I, the last time I spoke to you was a like warp touring. I was years ago, but I remember you had the kids with you on tour, you know, so I think that's so cool, you know? So. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, they, they get so much out of it, man. I, I, I tell people all the time, I'm just like, look, just bring your kids everywhere you go. Like they're, they will accommodate, like they'll, they'll figure it out, you know? Um, yeah, people, like Kelly, like, she was like, just bring Cheerios if they have something to snack on. <laughs> I think yeah, have bring like, just have a bunch of distractions and toys and like candy or whatever. Like they will do anything for toys and candy, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, what, what Warp Tour was that? That was the last touring one. That was at the Ventura date. So okay, uh, okay. I always liked that going, even though it was a little farther away, I always drive driving up to that one because it was nice and cool. It was right on the ocean. It wasn't so yeah, that was hot. And, yeah know, that, that backstage one's... area to get in and out of <laughs> yeah i'd rather play that one than the phoenix one. <laughs> oh yeah yeah oh that one's brutal <laughs> you'd always end up doing like the southwest portion and so you're oh. like in phoenix 110 degrees on like a black top <laughs> like, <laughs> literally your converse are melting <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah well, I miss you've also you got the two songs out uh it's free to stream or wherever music's at um you also re-released uh your 2000 i think seven album uh everything's yeah because i'm awesome that everything's awesome i'm thinking of the lego <laughs> yeah we should have done that too <laughs> um yeah so it's it's cool though because it comes it's 180 gram picture disc what what exactly is that i saw that the fun little okay, youtube so commercial for it you know basically like vinyl can come in different thicknesses right uh-huh so like commercial, like cheap vinyl is, I don't know how many, it's like 120 grams or something like that. Okay. 
So we got it like extra thick. And when it's thick, it's like, number one, it's durable. Number two, it's punchier because the grooves can be like deeper. So oh. it's just like a very like loud, punchy record. And yeah, I mean, we, we just did it up. It's like a gatefold with a big collage of all the random show posters. I, and- I love when bands do the collages of show posters and yeah, yeah i, I mean, love that you know I went to it's the poster too right you can boxes of our along. stuff and i just it, it it just threw up all over our floor <laughs> 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 and then we took pictures of it and man it's just such a cool time capsule like that record we listened to it all the way through a couple nights ago because we just wanted to make sure it was playing right before mm-hmm. we mailed out hundreds of copies yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i was just like man how did we do this (laughs) you know you kind of look back at it it's like this is a really good record i don't know where my head was at Uh, like you know because then you're like 26 years old you're insane (laughs) yeah exactly that's what i love about albums though it's like a very time capsule of like what you were feeling the artist was feeling about what what i was feeling when i first listened to that album or where i was when i first saw that you know them perform those songs it's really cool you know yeah, yeah, and like, like for us, it's it's get it's starting to get even weirder because mm-hmm. we're getting messages from people that were like, "This was my favorite album when I was ten years old," <laughs> and like that person is now like twenty three years old. Yeah. So it's, it's like like and some of them have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like they found that song on like Disney Radio or whatever, you know, when they were like a kid, and now they're like grown ups and they have kids, and they're like having their kids listen to it right <laughs> so we're just like becoming one of these like multi-generational bands that like just keeps sticking around <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's the way <laughs> yeah. to do it, you know? it, it, it really makes me happy you know it like to know that somebody uh you know cares <laughs> yeah absolutely so um before i let you go is there anything in the works for next year you know uh anything you're allowed to talk about or uh yeah like we're Basically, what we want to do is we want to put out music more frequently, right? Because mm-hmm. we've been on like a cycle of, you know, we'll release a full length every couple of years. And then in between, we'll do like a single or whatever. But we have like a, a like this like kind of plan for next year where we just want to like focus on something being like a record, but release it over the course of like several like installments, right? Mm-hmm. so and we really like vinyl so what we're thinking is like do like more frequent like seven inches or something yeah. and then have the whole thing build to one like awesome record you know so we're we're writing right now like i don't know what it's gonna turn into i don't know if it's gonna be like just a bunch of singles or is it is if it's gonna be like a rock opera or, or, <laughs> you know, or if it, like if it's gonna have like an arc or develop into a story i don't know but like I feel like there's potential to make something that just feels bigger. So that that's our plan. We just want to put out music, man. Like, and even if we can't tour, we're just going to keep putting music out because there's this thing called the internet. <laughs> yeah, I thank God for that. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. So yeah, but totally. So. Well, cool, man. Everyone go to www.thedollyrots.com. You can check out all the music there and order the uh, – because I'm awesome vinyl, get in time for Christmas right now, you know? Yeah, and like Kelly's doing all, we're doing all this other crazy stuff for Christmas. Like Kelly's baking brownies for people if you want brownies. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like we always do like wacky stuff for Christmas. So if you go to our, our store or whatever, you'll you'll see. It's like, it's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so yeah, man. But I, I appreciate you having me on. 